you are Peter Heath, founder of Venue Performance. People have watched this before. I am Catherine Joggle, the editor of The Overview. Um, and we are today going to be talking about events. I'm also looking at the Q&A box here. So if people have questions, do ask the questions. There'll be time at the end of the webinar for questions. But if people want to send them to me at the same time, and I feel like I can slot them in. Since you last spoke to Jane, uh, the UK has had a general election. How is the events se sector welcoming our socialist wonderland? Ah, yes. Let's get all political. Um, doesn't give a monkeys. The, uh, right. Is it what they want? They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. I think because there's a pretty much a, uh, I think the, the general consensus was there's a, there's a fag paper between the two parties from a, from a geopolitical economic point of view. Um, right. the, the things weren't going to swing wildly either way. You know, maybe if you sending your child to private school, um, or you are a doctor. Uh, maybe the you know there's some immediate things that need need shoring up. But um, as far as sort of general day to day meetings and events industry conference and meetings, nothing nothing much changes. I think a bit around Westminster changed. There was a bit of a flurry of activity around Westminster venues. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of hive of activity and things cancelled and being shunted and all that kind of thing. But um, on the whole, it hasn't shifted the dial at all. And interestingly, um, I've done a couple of STR presentations recently as well. As in, I've 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 sort of sat on them and listened to them and partnered with them and all that kind of thing. And they say internationally, elections don't have any impact. They don't swing the dial. They probably do have impact in pockets, but they don't really swing the dial. Um, and we can't see any swing. Oh, we like to all. see sort of more kind of happiness about a stable runway now that, you know, things aren't mm. going to be crazy. You can maybe think about investing in your business, which might involve events, might involve yeah. events yeah. And, hire people and that kind of thing. Is it more, we see more stability, more, more business confidence, more potential consumer confidence? Well, I think, yes, gen generally speaking, um, we held an event a little while ago um, at the uh, the great M&E debate, and we started off with um, Tom Pugh from RSM giving an economic outlook. And and his basic outlook was we're all, we're all going to be a little bit better off in the back end of 2024, um, yeah. certainly in 2025. And and probably in 2026, unless unless something happens, like you know, well, I have a conspiracy. I have a conspiracy theorist that said that um, that there's going to be an assassination, and I went, oh, stop it, and I was like, oh my god, and then uh, a pa another pandemic. Obviously, you can't cater for those. So so barring weird things, and and then and then a hack, and was the Microsoft thing a hack or was it a a cock up of somebody pressing the wrong button? Um, so there's all those. So barring those things, because I think that has affected certainly the hotel industry. There's been a lot of um, problems in in the in the hotel sector um, in, only in the, only in the last sort of couple of weeks with regards to that sort of outage. Um, but all of those things aside, things are pretty good for meetings and events or business events in general. I don't not quite. I think weddings has calmed down a bit. That was all a bit very excitable after the pandemic, but apart from that, um, things of things are back into a bit of a rhythm. But it's a good rhythm; it's a positive rhythm, and there is a general sense of optimism about the economy and growth, which is obviously what it's all about: growth in the GDP. We still, you know, China are sort of reframing the whole growth metric because they're slowing growth. Down to a meager four point seven or something. Oh, um, <laughs> awful, awful growth. And as is, not point three. Oh, like that amazing, amazing. So we are, we are, we're going gangbusters. Um, mm -hmm. But it's growth, it, uh, and you know, quite frankly, we'll take it at the moment. So we're going in the right direction with growth and the economy. Um, uh, who knows what Labour are going to do when they get their proper mitts on the cash? They might do good things. They might do not so good things. Nobody quite knows. Um, and but I think generally speaking, we're, we're we're in a good place. And the meetings and events data certainly shows that we're in a good place. We'll have a little look in a minute, Catherine. Look, um, 
Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go. Live. I haven't. Pre- I, I don't do as you know. I don't really do slides and that sort of thing. Um, so we'll go live into the system. So all you lovely people out there, the Derricks and the Lisas and the and the Martins that have questions, um, we can ask the system. That you'll see how it works in a minute. For those of you that haven't seen it before, we can ask questions of the data in a live format, which is always a bit risky. But what the hell? We'll go for it. Um, but yeah, it's looking good. So, what looking? What does looking good look like if your data? Oh, okay. Right. Shall I do it then? Shall I just? Shall I show everybody what what it what it looks like? Okay. So, share my screen. That one, I believe, is the one to share. And it is. Hey, there we go. So, what you are looking at is a chart that shows you. Uh, the average number of bookings per venue per month across the whole of the UK and the average number of events that arrive, that's sort of event speak, arrive meaning start, start in the month. So um, so it's it's called the bookings chart, but it kind of gives you an idea of, uh, I I always call it a sales tracker um, type, uh, chart because it's it's tracking the pace of bookings i.e sales i.e intent and it's also tracking uh activity in terms of how many events are going on so um the lighter line this one here the one down at the bottom uh underneath the the light what is that is that like a must uh, what color is that light orange light red anyway um That line there is the average number of uh, sales per month per venue. And the darker line is the average number of events delivered per venue per month. We're looking at a period of January 22. And I've, I've done that because I'm going to give it some context. And we're looking all the way forward until the end of 2024. And because of the way that we take the data from the properties, we've got about 350 ish properties contributing data now the way we take the data from the properties um we can see into the future so we can we can actually go into 2025 if you want although there's not much activity there but that's why i've stopped it at 24 um you what sorry july period looks a bit like onwards looks a bit (gasps) yeah well that's that short lead time thing we you know what happened in the pandemic was nobody was making long-term decisions so you you talk about the confidence in the economy as the confidence in the economy grows, um, the the lead the lead times will get longer. Stop. Um, what? Can, can you confirm? Oh, we have a question. Can you confirm the line colours again? From oh, where yes. I, it looks like the bottom one, where it goes from July to December in the most depressing flat line, uh, is orange and is orange. Book- okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's- and is book is booking as far as I can tell with my glasses. And the one above it is red and is it was that you say delivered events. Yeah. So think of think of this one. It's not a depressing line, it's a positive line. And I'll I'll explain why in a minute. This Ooh. this line here is well, that's that's mildly depressing. Um, Ooh. but this line here is uh think of it as like a sales chart. So every time you get a contract, you bring a bell, ching ching, we we've we've we're taking a booking. We haven't taken a booking necessarily in the uh, for the month. So you've taken a booking, you know, you've sold a conference for 100 people at, for some stage in the future, whether it be a, you know a week, a month, a year, whatever. So you but you've you've signed a contract. So so the lighter line gives you an idea of intent, i.e., pace, i.e., confidence, and you mm-hmm. can see that obviously since 2022, that line has been going broadly speaking in an upward trajectory it's just gradually going up it's never going to go crazy because um it's just not the way the world works but it does it does go gradually up right until 2024 when it gradually starts to dip a little bit now it's a bit like um inflation um you know a slowdown in inflation doesn't mean a reduction in prices. It mean, it just means that prices aren't rising as quickly as they were um, b- beforehand. So a slowdown in bookings doesn't necessarily mean that nobody wants to do events anymore. It just means that the pace of sales 
is okay. is slightly slowing but that's always going to be the case because it's been growing for the last two years so at some stage post pandemic return to normal um pent up demand whatever you want to call it that that had to calm down and we're probably seeing a calming down of that now but the end bit at the bottom does look pretty calm what that bit um, <laughs> well yeah that 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 well that's obviously going to be zero because we're not in you know we haven't taken july's number yet you know so we take we take the data every uh -huh. month in the for, for the previous month so july hasn't finished yet so anything there is going to be zero so that we, we we can't we can't see what sales are happening in july because we haven't got the data for july that's why that falls off a cliff it always will fall off a cliff but we can see what events have been booked into the future in the darker line right so are we all clear on what the chart means once you get your head around it it's actually a really really good chart and you can you can check the uh seasonality the the pace of it as well and what we can see is that look think that the darker line in terms of the number of events happening that's just going up and 2023 we all knew was a great year for events now the caution is and i've heard some horror stories here that because this year was so good and because the the line was going you know nicely up um, businesses got very excitable and set another crazy target for 2024. And so I think a lot of the narrative around at the moment is the fact that it's not it's not as busy as 2023. And therefore people are thinking, oh, oh my God, Hello. it's it's a you know, it's a Hello. oh it's a disaster. It's not a disaster at all. It's there's still growth, and you can see the dark line is still growing, it's just not growing as fast and as quickly as it was in 2023. So if you got all excited about 2023's budgets uh, in terms of smashing them, um, smashed it, then and, and then you thought, way, let's set even more aggressive targets for 2024. No, don't do that because at some point it's going to have to calm down and we're now seeing that calming down here. So there's quite a few anecdotal bits of evidence that I've got of people panicking a little bit thinking oh my god uh, it wasn't as good as it was last year and all that kind of thing so we just got to be a little bit careful but generally speaking we're in growth mode still you know the, and there's always going to be a lag here you see that's going down and that's going up that's because that's because there's a lag with us because you've had a steady booking pattern for the last two years that's given you that's given you the growth of the darker line um so you've got a lag of of this here if this line continues to go down you will see that that darker line start to dampen a little bit um but as you can see all things generally speaking are on the up so that's that's a good thing you may it's not good. have if if you are a venue or if you are a hotel group or what have you you might have pockets of indifference to this data and don't forget, this data is average across the whole of the UK. So, you know, the devil's always in the detail. But generally speaking, things are things are pretty good. Excellent. Uh, so, tell us some some devilish detail then. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, For example, what what's this telling us about booking windows? Have they now settled into a pattern? Um, yeah, the lead times I've 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 one I prepared earlier. So this one here, for example. So if we were to look at, um, let's look at lead times then. So uh, where are we going here? Where are we going? Lead time, there we go. Let's take away price. I've looked at some pricing as well. I'm just going to just wait a moment. So wait while this, actually, um, let's go to all, all event types, all event types of all sizes. Hold on. Oh, it's having a little moment. Ah, uh, there we go. See, this is the this is the good news bit, right? Okay. So what we're looking at now, we're now comparing periods. So what we were doing before, we were looking at period Jan twenty two to December twenty four. So one big long line. What we're now doing is we're comparing periods, and the period I'm comparing is Jan twenty three to mm -hmm. so basically beginning of Jan to the end of June. So H one twenty three versus H one 24 okay um ignore so this is my own sort of deck internally so ignore a few things and i'll tell you what i mean by that in a minute so we're looking all event types 
and we can see here that this is these are the two lines you're looking at this one here so lead time was 85 days in in 23 it's now 106 days so look at that bingo so lead times and that is a to answer your question about the detail that is a very 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 sure sign that people are getting more confident about booking further out and that was a real problem for businesses post pandemic everybody it was all hand to mouth type stuff and and it was making everybody very very frazzled and also more specifically very difficult to predict because you never knew what was going on from one minute to the next so again remember this is averaging so you know you small meetings will be a shorter lead time bigger conferences will have a longer lead time and in fact we can segment we can segment this so if we said okay let's look at the conference market what's the lead time for the conference market um bearing in mind that in the meetings and events sector the majority of the cash is spent on meetings and conferences so you know weddings banqueting parties exhibitions all that kind of stuff it does it does uh contribute but nowhere near as much as meetings and conferences do and you can see here the conferences went from 126 days to 145 days so a nice decent um lead time there as well that's increasing and if we look at meetings I think, I think meetings are quite decent as well, actually, from memory. Let's have a little wait and see what the meetings say. Yeah, 46, 47 to 71. So, again, you know, the trend is, you know, lead times are getting longer, which is all about confidence in booking for further into the future, obviously. Now, the other thing we can have a look at, um, talking about the um, devil of the detail. Oh, yeah, we'll start. What? Yep. Yeah. How does that compare, do you know, to sort of pre-pandemic and and or more kind of normal? What would you expect to be a kind of a good good lead time? And are we there? <laughs> What's a good lead time? Uh, golly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if that is... I... I think we should stop stop comparing pre pre pre, pre pandemic. There's there there was it's 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 ebbing away now, but there was the question always was you know and if you read it in all the press statements and all the releases of financial figures and results and what have you oh you know we're we're back to pre pandemic level, um, we're you know we're above pre pandemic budgets and all that kind of thing. Um, because that was a point of reference. You had 2019, which was a good year. Then 2020, which obviously we all know what happened there. 2021, something happened, but not a lot. 22, everybody's coming back. 23, properly back. So the only point of reference from a, from a point of certainty was 2019. So that's, the, that's what everybody was using. But now I think, I mean, that, that was four... That was five years ago. So the world has changed. The world has changed so much in five years that we should probably stop comparing it with 2019 because it's it's kind of meaningless as well. It doesn't mean anything. Why, you know, why look for a statistic that has no meaning and, and you're not going to make any decision based on it? We we might be able to do it, but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's healthy to look back. You know, what was the lead time in 2019 compared to a lead time in 2024, for example? Well, who cares? What 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 are you going to do with that information? Are you going to make any decisions based on that information? No. So look forward. So um there we go. That was that, was, that was, sounded like me telling you off, but it's not, but it's it's a it's interesting in some positive life advice. Um so tell me that price. Uh tell us more about pricing. Hmm. Okay, so let's have a little look at pricing. Average revenue per delegate. So same period, H123 compared to H124. Ooh, creeping up. £90 compared to £93. So there you go for all you all you budgeters out there. 93.71 minus 90.13 equals 3.58 divided by 90.13. So that is, that's a 4% increase in revenue per delegate from this time last year to this time, this, this, this first half to this 
time last year. And actually, what I've been, and you can check all my recordings, what I've been saying is there will be growth this year, but it will be single-digit growth. And, and and there it is. So single-digit growth in terms of 4% price uplift. Because the price the price uplift was baked in in 23. But, you know, businesses couldn't hold on to that low price any longer. They, they, they did very well in holding on to it in 2022. But come 2023, they said, you know what, we just, we just can't do this anymore. We've got to start putting the prices up. In 22, everybody was grateful for the cash. Uh, in 23, people then started talking about profit. Um, and in 24, you can't suddenly do another massive hoik of pricing, but you can put them up within reason. Um, but now that inflation's pegged down, you know, the massive price increases are, 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 are not that easy to get away with unless you've had something pretty major. I suppose I suppose the, um, the overhead with the minimum wage, that might give you a, a reason. But... They're, they're 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 modest, but if we then look at, um, for example, if we look at I don't know conference, let's go into conferencing, um, for example, we can see what the price is for conferencing, is and I see it looks going down tight even hundred pounds ahead compared to ninety six pounds, so that's slight that's going slightly down four percent, mm. which is that's a bit weird, isn't it? And then. Uh are you hearing that um, while it seems the market can bear moderate price increases, um, are they are you having to compensate by having a better experience or are people more demanding? Is there more of a drive to value in all of this? Um, all of all of those. Um, I think uh, there was a time we did we did a piece of work with BVA BDRC and those clever folk they they measure sentiment so we measure hard data um without any opinion or um or emotion involved uh they measure all the emotion and all the sentiment and what they were seeing post pandemic was a horrendous um uh, result when it came to um people's satisfaction surveys you know the staff were a bit rubbish because they hadn't been trained because they'd all left and gone back to Eastern Europe or whatever. So there's a, there's a real vacuum of, of qualified, uh, staff, uh, food supplies were all over the place. Um, so the satisfaction levels were really poor, but they're, they're now back again. So I think people are now getting back into a rhythm in terms of quality, but there's also been, um, we're also a bit more picky post again post pandemic. We want you know even just down to our own personal choices. We want things a little bit better, um, and we want them. Um, we don't mind paying for them, but we we do want them a little bit better. So when there's prices going up, they want that service level. They want the conditions of the of the property to be that little bit better. They want the loose to be a bit cleaner. All those kind of things. But if you look at the BVA BDRC data, that that customer satisfaction trend is going up so it's a good thing um we don't measure sentiment obviously that will be a bva bdrc thing but i think the general consensus is is that yeah if you have if you if your property isn't up to scratch you can't command decent prices but if you do if your property is up to scratch you can you can uplift a little bit but that's just that's just common sense isn't it i don't think there's anything unusual there but the, 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 so the meetings are going up. So eighty one versus eighty nine. So that's quite a big jump. That's that's a that's a hell of a jump in terms of pricing from this time last year to this time this year. Um, mm. Yeah, nearly ninety pounds compared to eighty one and a half pounds. So you know when you compare meetings and conferences, let's be clever and put them together. Let's see if that swings the dial. Should slightly swing the dial. Yeah, up. There we go. So 90 compared to 92 and a half. So bearing in mind that the majority of the cash and of the activities in meetings and conferences, the prices are the prices are going up, um, but not at the same pace they were 2022 20, to 23. Those were they were they were rocketing up. Um, right. But it did dampen the enthusiasm. The people were prepared to pay for that. Um, and yeah. uh, for your next trick, can you split this between London and the provinces? Oh gosh, 
Um, can I split it between London and the point? Well, I can. Um, I can see you're thrilled by the opportunity. The what? Sorry. You're thrilled by the opportunity. Well, I, 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 I can do it. This is where my, this is where my strategy falls down a little bit. I can do it. I'll just have to do some fiddling around with the data. Um, okay, let me try then. Let me try. Let's have a look at. Let's go back to my whole market. And let's go back to my Greater London. Uh, let's see, let's see the booking trend for Greater London. Mm, okay, so, oh, there we go. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. Right, so Greater London. The, so the same. Yeah, we go. Look, so the kicker twenty three was. So as you would probably expect, things are a bit more punchy in Greater London. So the jump from 22 to 23 was bigger because London came back. London's a London's just such a draw of a destination. It's almost a country in its own right, isn't it? Hence, I guess, the question. Um, so that came back really strongly. Um, th that's starting to soften out a little bit now. Uh, people are, you know, it's almost, you know, anything but london you know certainly for international visitors they you know they, they want to get out to the green spaces and what have you so um and london doesn't offer too many of those but it is it is london is london it is very very popular but you can see the booking trend in london so bounce back from january it's and it's and it's it's coming up a little bit so look so from april may june bookings are going up again in london whereas across the uk if you remember they were they were slightly dipping um, but it's it's not as pronounced in terms of its volume of events as it were as it was across the rest of the UK. So um, let's have a look at let's do some clever things. What should we do here? Let's go for um, let's do the pricing. So let's do side by side pricing. So what we'll do here. Let's go for um, January to January to June twenty twenty four. There we go. And let's go. Um, obviously, we have. I'm not comparing a venue because I'm just looking at London data. So, okay, we need to write these things down now. So, London pricing for twenty twenty four was one hundred and one. And for 2024, for 2023, let's go back to 2023. Um, this is where it becomes very dull because it's it's lots of me clicking. So it's not the not the not the slickest. But what it does do is it gives you the real data. And th th why why I do this is because I get I like people to ask questions and I can I can show them the data. 97.65. There you go. 97.65. So the average revenue per delegate in 2023, H1, was 97 pounds, and it's now 101 pounds. So that gives you an idea of 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 growth as well, which is about it's about the same actually, isn't it? It's about the same in terms of four four percent growth, three percent growth maybe um, for London. So you've got a similar growth in terms of spend. So London hasn't gone hasn't gone crazy, and that's probably due to the fact that you know London is incredibly competitive. You've got so many competing properties and places to go in London. If one if one prices itself out, you just go somewhere else. Um, so competition keeps pricing pegged, which is a good thing, um, but it's still higher than the rest of the UK generally speaking, which again is what you'd expect. Um, Very good. Excellent. So now as we're at the 34 minute mark, uh mm. does anyone else have any more questions? Questions from the ether. Yeah. Good, good one. Shall I stop sharing that or shall I leave it open? I like it. I like it. I'll leave it open. Okay. Um, let's see who we've got in the taking part. Fergus, he's a clever chap. He's always got clever questions. Lisa. Um, she's always got good ones as well. I think that used to be in maths classes. What's right? You answer a question. Yeah, I'm calling them out now. I normally like to sort of call call people out. 
what okay while we're waiting for questions to come in then what okay, let's wipe questions but you yeah give summary thought well i'll stop i'll stop sharing my my screen now i can i can share it back again what are you seeing oh, you, you, first, you, oh first can we look at m and &E in rural locations and whether they've seen a dip across the board can we can we yes we can okay i'm going to start sharing again Oh, hang on. Rural locations. Do you mean like in, in the countryside? That sort of thing. Um, who's 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 asking that? What who's um I, I tell you, are you gonna use them openly or oh yeah. Uh, uh, I can look in the questions. Hannah Conroy, can we look at how many rural locations and whether they're seeing a dip across the board? So uh Bol Bolton Abbey. So okay, so uh yes we can, Hannah. Um, we can we can pick a bunch of properties in um, in a in a in a rural um, environment. I'm just going to close something, and I'm hoping that I don't exit. Um, stop share. Um, we can um, we can look at we can we can pick a whole load, a load of venues across the UK that are similar to yours. So you know rural sort of conference and venue sort of uh, places. And it, it probably what we'll do is if you want to see that data, because it's quite a niche question, if you if you contact me afterwards, we can we can go through that together and I can I can show you. Um because it is a good question. And I think with the data, you've got a few things happening with the data. You've got UK, which is interesting. It's pretty it's, it's 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 useful and interesting for these purposes, but in terms of competitive analysis, it's next to useless because, as Hannah points out, you want to compare similar type properties to yourself before you make any decisions. So then, what do you do? Then do you go to the cities? Okay, what's London? What's Manchester? What's Birmingham? What's Edinburgh? What's Bristol? All those kind of things. So you look at the you look at the rates in the cities. And to see if there's any change there, southwest versus northeast, and all that kind of thing. Mm. And then, but we we also know there's a bucket load of events that go on in the countryside. So you know the Bolton Abbeys, the De Veres, um, you know Lisa from Venues Collection. You know she's got a whole bunch of properties that are you know conference venues out in the beautiful countryside that that are very different. Again, so do you pick those? across the UK, or do you pick them in an area like the Midlands? The Midlands is very good for those types of properties. Do you pick them all around the Midlands? So again, it depends on picking venues by type and picking venues by region, and then you will get down to to, to real sort of devilish detail. So you see why you get the rest of us from that process. Exactly. I'll save you all for the people that don't have any desire for that whatsoever. But how, is it was it Hannah? Um, uh, if you if you contact me afterwards, we can. I'll be I'll be very glad to to show you that data and um, and see how you're see how you're doing as far as that's concerned. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, so, so well, yep. Summer thoughts? Should we be heading into our summer holidays happy, sad? I okay. So I think generally speaking, uh, Emily in the UK is is experiencing good positive growth and end of story we're, we're on a, we're on a roll and 24 and i predict 25 is going to be a positive year of growth however i will caveat that by saying don't go crazy with your budgeting and if and if you've got bosses that give you crazy budgets then you've, you've got to have a way of kicking back on those because it's just unrealistic because they get themselves all excited um, they see the growth they look at their own, uh, you know, personal, not personal agendas, but their own property agendas in terms of profitability or revenues or what have you. Don't forget, there's a lot of refinancing going on at the moment, you know, post, post COVID refinancing. So there's a lot of pressure on properties to deliver a lot of cash so that they look more favorable when they go into refinancing. So what do they do? Beds are softening. So they look around them and they go, oh, M and E, you you're experiencing growth. You get me some more cash, and it's like, well, I can get you some more cash, but I can't like pull a rabbit out of a hat. So calm yourself. And that's where the data and the evidence is going to be useful for the ones that don't use it, because 
you, 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 otherwise you're just going to get beaten up. You're going to get beaten the crap out of because somebody somewhere has set you a budget that is way too unrealistic. And, and then you're going to be beaten up for underperforming. And that's not necessarily the case because if you can show that you're, you're not underperforming, you're actually outperforming both the market and your competitors, then it's not you and your team. It's, it's, it's the market and the conditions. They just set some crazy budget. So I have heard some stories of those. So I would urge anybody to, um, to really get their ducks in a row with regards to, to numbers and, and not be rolled over with, with that. I mean, that's easy for me to say, but, you know, um, but yeah, generally speaking, high, mid to high single digit growth for 24, I think we'll see across the board. Some might have crazy growth. I was with a hotel group the other day and some properties had 22% growth. Okay. Some properties had 2% growth. Right. So, Fair. you know, average that out. A mixed bag, but if you find that you're experiencing violence at the hand of any of your bosses, please contact HR. <laughs> yes. Please contact <laughs> HR and ask me for data and I'll show it to you and give it to you. Oh, um, well. Wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. Well, okay. That, oh, oh, these people, an anonymous person. Will outsourcing in F and A H R B H R be considered as a cost saving measure? Is that to do with violence? Will outsourcing in F and A. For F okay. food. F and B maybe. Considered oh, as a cost-saving measure. Hmm. I would have thought that'd be a a, a cost less, a, a, a cost more. Yeah, because when you outsource anything, the costs go. I suppose you you buy you buy less, but you pay more per whatever it, per unit. So mm -hmm. what's uh, who the, the anonymous attendee? Can you can you tell us what you what's your understanding of F and A is? Like I think the, the devil might be in the detail of that one. Um, come on. F and A, food, food and outsourcing is outsourcing a cost saving measure. Oh, finance, oh and finance and accounting functions. Will outsourcing and finance for HR be considered as a cost saving measure? Uh, I, 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 if I'm honest, I can't, I can't, I couldn't comment on that. Um, cost I, less. Yeah. Well, cost less because you, you not have somebody, you don't have a bum on a seat, but you're just buying in a service. So, you're probably yes. spending less, but arguably you want more eyes on the numbers during periods of, of growth because you want to spot where the opportunities are. So you, know, you, might, be spending, you might spend a bit more, but you might get a bit more. Um, back, guys. Wonderful. Okay, Peter, I'd like to thank you very much mm. for everything um, and allowing us to look at it. And I'd like to remind everyone that, uh, oh, lot, lots of things, that the re recording will be available shortly if you wish to relive our thoughts on uh, on politics, weather and violence in the workplace. Um, we have lots of events coming up um, and activities in August and September here at HOSPA. So do please check the website at hospa.org. The next webinar is on the 6th of August and on the topic of diversity, equity and inclusion in hospitality, which is always interesting. And I think a seamless link from violence in the workplace, which is never to be supported. So no. I just like all pretending today and uh, it's been a treat. Bye bye. Uh, thanks, everybody. Cheerio. Bye.